I just don't like him managing me, Latoya said. I've got to get away from him. Her brother, Michael, happened to be sitting within hearing distance, but didn't weigh in. Because I know Michael over there thinking, well, I told you. So now that I'm back at work, child, I need a work bag. So I am using Ah, uh, we been reading with Uptown Nawab tote as my work bag. I put my lunch in it. Um, I put my book in it because, you know, I got to do my work. You know, my wallet in it, my keys in it. Everything that I need to go to work and have a good goddamn day. I bet you you could use one too. Go on over there to uptopbeauty.com and check it out. It was a noble undertaking, and to ensure nobody got out of line, Quincy Jones posted a banner outside Studio A that read, Please check your egos at the door. Just about everyone got the message. The two notable exceptions being country western singer Waylon Jennings and my brother-in-law Bill Whitmore. Waylon was sitting right next to Stevie Wonder, going over the We Are The World song lyrics. When Stevie got the idea to have us sing a key lyric in Swahili, I'm a country boy and I'm not singing that shit, wailed old Waylon. Instantly, the entire room went silent. Then Jennings got up and stomped out. Some of the other artists were in favor of locking the door behind him, but a few expressed their own milder reservations about the change in the lyrics. The matter was debated thoroughly and resolved, and eventually Waylon was talked into returning to the studio. Bullshit the bank up. I'm about to see him kiss his ass. I can't stand them mother hunchies. You gotta kiss their ass to make the world right. I'll be like, let that nigga go. Let him go. Ain't nobody here. His mama ain't here. His mammy ain't here. Ain't nobody here to kiss his ass. So let him go. Uh, uh, diggity clockity, get over here and sing Waylon Jennings part. The bullshit, the baker. As for Bill Whitmore, June's husband, manager, he embarrassed us all by causing a scene because as a non-singer, he wasn't allowed inside the studio to begin with. Others such as Jane Fonda, Ali McGraw, and Dickity Clarkity all patiently watched on a TV monitor in another room. But that wasn't good enough for Bill. His response was to announce that if he didn't go in, neither did June. Nobody else was allowed to bring family or handlers inside. Handlers? Handlers? Oh, Stevie, I know you got your dude to guide you around here, but he won't have to stay on the outside, okay? i walk you in. Maybe that's what they mean by handlers. But that wasn't good enough for Bill. His response was to announce that if he didn't go in, neither did June. Nobody else was allowed to bring family or handlers inside, and damned if Anita or I were going to argue that an exception be made for Wild Bill. So away he marched with June, just as Jones and O'Martian were making assignments for the 21 solo lines in the song. Without June, it didn't make much sense to give the Pointer Sisters their own line. And so Anita and I were relegated to singing backup on one of the most culturally significant songs of the 20th century. Bill didn't give a hoot about that. The horse's ass just wanted everybody to know what a big shot he considered himself. Our disappointment about not getting a solo line didn't last long because it was so much fun just hanging out with old friends. At one point, Anita, Tina, Turner, Bad Midler, and Latoya Jackson and I huddled in a corner for a free willing talk about men. I recall being thrown for a loop when all of a sudden Latoya asked if I could help her find a way to get away from her father and manager Joe Jackson, who was notoriously heavy handed with his children. I just don't like him managing me, Latoya said. I've got to get away from him. Her brother, Michael, happened to be sitting within hearing distance, but didn't weigh in. 
Because I know Michael over there thinking, well, I told you. Why you think I had to get rid of the name? I nigga? stammered and stuttered around until the divine Miss M jumped in and changed the subject. I always liked Bette Midler's style and spunk, especially when it came to men. Once we happened to be dating the same guy, and one night when it was my turn, and he came to pick me up, there were raw scratch marks all over his face. When I asked what happened, he confessed that he had gotten into an argument with Bette, and she had literally scratched out a victory. When I reminded Bette of that poor sap now, she smiled broadly as Tina Turner looked on admirably. Released in March 1985, We Are the World sold in excess of 20 million copies. It topped music charts throughout the world and became the fastest selling American pop single in history. The Porner sisters would not experience success like that again. We had climbed our mountaintop. Now the trick would be not to tumble all the way back down. Breakout was the seminal record of our career and a real bitch to try to follow. I wonder what went through Michael Jackson's head when he recorded Bad, the follow-up to Thriller, or when Carl King had to constantly live in the shadow of tapestry. How do you continue on with your work when you know you've peaked? The answer is, you just keep on keeping on. And so we did. The Pointer Sisters didn't even take a breather. We continued our toward place and had contact in the can in early 1985, but then had to keep delaying its release while Breakout kept up its monster run on the charts. Contact was recorded between concert dates throughout 1984 at Studio 55 in Los Angeles, Stark Lake in Osoe, Florida, Clinton Recording Studios in New York City, and RAK in London. While we were in England filming a commercial for Diet Coke, child, that's when you know you made it. We were thrilled to receive an invitation to perform for Queen Elizabeth II at Buckingham Palace. But once again, a once in a lifetime opportunity was thwarted by Bill Whitmore. Man, y'all need to push Bill Whitmore down some steps. That ninja need to catch a Fifi or something. Y'all need to do something to him. Fix him a pie or something, cause, cause, cause something, he's in the way. He's in the way of y'all success. Nigga, move, move. The day after the invite came, as Anita and I spent hours in London's finest boutiques looking for wardrobe for our next video shoot, we were walking a good foot above ground, anticipating the rare honor of playing for the queen. We came crashing down to earth when we got back to our hotel and found out that Bill had hijacked June and they were already on their way back to California. See, this is the reason why June get bitches because she was with a ninja who controlled her to a point where she couldn't even make the money. No explanation was given for yanking the rug out from under us again. Anita and I had a pretty good idea. It was just Bill's Napoleonic complex again rearing its pathetic pointy head he was a deeply insecure man who just couldn't stand having his wife and sisters-in-law get all the attention once again produced by richard perry contact was our 11th studio album and our debut with rca okay so pause let me say this I always read the comments. I may not respond to all of them, but I definitely do read them. So um, I had said, I had read something in the book about, I think the video before last, I had talked about how uh, Patti LaBelle had used Richard Perry for On My Own. And a couple of you all jumped down in the comments and told me, uh, no, he was supposed to do it, but he didn't do it because he was a very, very rude man to Patti LaBelle. And she was like, get this ninja out of here. Oh, it sold well. It went platinum almost immediately. 
It was largely an exercise in slick, edgy, synth-pop rock. Dare Me hit bullseye on various charts. Number six, R&B, number 11, pop, number one, dance, and a top 20 hit in the UK and several other countries. The song also became part of pop culture history as an outtake from the popular nationally syndicated radio program, American Top 40 in September, 1985. I used to love Casey Kasem because he kind of reminded me of uh, Dickity Clark. He just was a person who appreciated good music and understood good music. He was a radio personality that I liked just as much as the radio personality Wolfman Jack. I just liked to see a radio personality cross over to television because that was just the next level of success. Hence the Wendy Williams, okay? Uh, Wendy Williams is a piece of work, okay? We not gonna lie, but what is going on with her now, she does not deserve. She has some health issues and a man that she chose to love basically smacked her in the face. I mean, don't get me wrong, you cancers can be mean as shit, okay? But nobody deserves what's happening to her right now. The last notes of Dare Me had barely died away when host Casey Kasem began reading a letter from a listener requesting a special song dedication for his terminally ill dog, Snuggles. A sentence or two into the sad letter, Casey stopped and launched into an angry and profane rant that concluded with the plaintive demand that the show's producer use his effing brain and not come out of a record that's up tempo and gotta talk about a fucking dog dying. Freedom and twist, my arm followed, dare me, as singles but ended up like poor snuggles. There was a lot of booger sugar and booze in the studio when we recorded contact and people quietly slipping in and out of bathrooms for a quick toot to rally themselves for our all night sessions. Now semi-sober, I wasn't nuts about that either, but I enjoyed making the two videos we shot for Dare Me and Twist My Arm. On October 11th, 1985, we recorded our next album, Hot Together, at Studio 55, and I didn't want to drive to Malibu in the dark, so I hired a limo to take me home after the session. Once I was tucked away in the back seat, I reached into my purse for a stash of booger sugar. It was just before dawn, and I knew that if I snorted just a line or two, I would be up all day. The fact is, I was bored with getting high and tired of the way I felt while coming down. One of the last times I got high, it wasn't pretty. I thought I was seeing things on my ceilings and screamed, waking my new assistant, Mindy Laparis, who, who later became a celebrity chef to the stars. I asked her to check my ceilings for maggots and spiders. She did and assured me they weren't there. I was hallucinating after an all night freebase session. Now I looked at the plastic bag filled with magical white powder and reached over to the control panel and pushed the lever that opened the limo sunroof. Then I stood up, took a big gulp of the fresh ocean air and tossed the baggie into the wind. I was done. In 2015, I celebrated 30 years of sobriety. I quickly discovered that getting sober didn't rid you of all your problems in one fell swoop. After all, drug and alcohol addictions take years to build and even though I'd sworn them off, I still exhibited major addictive behaviors and was almost as confused in sobriety as I'd been before. I think God sends certain people into our lives when we need them most. And at about that time, he sent me a messenger named Gabe Harwitz. Yeah, yeah. You say that you love me. 